This is why you need to understand your habits, otherwise you'll never reach your academic goals. Let's get into it. Goals can take many forms. This could be to get into a selective high school, scoring a certain mark in an exam, or even becoming more disciplined in terms of general preparation. In order to achieve this, understanding your own actions and understanding how habits are formed is crucial in order to change it. If you're not aware of problems or have incorrect habits that don't align with where you want to be in the future, it could be a sign for you to change it today. In today's video, we will be covering concepts from a popular book, Atomic Habits by James Clear, which in my opinion, has excellent practical lessons that students can apply and follow. I will be breaking down this video into three key sections. First, on how habits are formed, how habits can be changed by being aware of it, and how habit scorecard is a system that can be used to radically improve a student's ability to reach their goals. First, we should understand how our brain works in terms of forming habits. Just like how a scientist makes predictions based on experiments, our brains constantly predict and react based on what we repeatedly experience. The brain notices and remembers patterns that help us act without needing to about thinking about every little step. Often we learn without knowing we're learning them. For example, you might not realize you've started to grasp patterns in a language class or know and recognize steps in a scientific method. But with practice, these things start to feel natural. Our bodies do many things without conscious thought, like breathing or digesting food. As a young child, you may have to think of each step over and over again, but over time, this becomes basically automatic, such as brushing your teeth when you pick up the toothbrush, put toothpaste on it, put it in your mouth, etc. By making and having these habits being naturally automatic and our bodies doing it subconsciously, these habits save us energy because our brains isn't fully engaging with every action we take. Sometimes a student may feel like they automatically set up their study space when it's time to do their homework or they have to eat some snacks before they start studying. This is the brain picking up and cues on our everyday life and learning from them silently, which is the basis of forming habits. Before we can change a habit though, we need to notice it. This means becoming more aware of our daily patterns and the triggers that lead to automatic behaviors. For students, this could involve tracking when and where they study most effectively or what distracts them the most. To help develop new positive habits, parents can work with their children to identify cues that lead to both productive and unproductive behaviors. Setting clear, consistent routines can help remind and reinforce the habits you actually want to create, like designating a specific time and quiet place for the student to do their homework and owning that place. Setting controversial or inconsistent routines will reinforce the habits you don't want to have, like playing games or not working on an assessment. Encouraging awareness about why certain actions are taken can also help students to let them know that it is making more deliberate choices about their habits. Parents can help by creating an environment that promotes these positive habits. This could mean setting up a dedicated study space, limiting distractions when doing homework, or establishing family routines that align with healthy lifestyle. If every time a student sits down to study and they're interrupted with mom or dad telling them to do a chore or eat dinner after school, it is very difficult to progress and for good habits to form. We are not saying not to have dinner or to give chores, but rather making sure it's done at certain times that are intentional and promote good, healthy habits. Parents can even encourage their children to start with minor changes to the habits and for them to recognize that the efforts come over time. Celebrating small wins can boost their self esteem and their morale and motivate them to continue with these positive changes. Never reward or encourage behavior that we do not want to be formed. For instance, if we see a student using AI for their homework assignments, they need to be told that this is unacceptable. If a student is smoking and you don't say anything, they're going to assume that it's totally acceptable behavior. Point out and make it clear habits that we don't want and make it clear the habits that we do want. And this is something that will take time. The habit scorecard is a practical tool that can particularly transform 
students by helping them develop self-awareness about the daily routines and the habits they form. Here's a detailed application of how students can use the habit scorecard and how parents can assist in this process. Students can start by listing all the daily activities from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep. This includes everything from waking up, eating breakfast, packing their school bag, attending classes, doing homework, and even playing games. They then have to classify each of these tasks. Next to each activity, students categorize them as positive with a plus symbol and negative with a minus symbol or neutral with an equal symbol based on how these habits align with the student's academic and personal goals. For example, reading before bed might be positive with a plus while checking social media right away after waking up is a negative with a minus if it delays their morning preparation. When writing this down, the book Atomic Habits notes that students need to think about the long-term outcomes of their habits. Does this habit help them understand and become the student and person they want to be? This reflection helps them understand that not only do they have to think about the immediate benefits or the drawbacks of a habit, but also the long-term consequences on their education and personal growth. The important distinction is that it is crucial for students to learn or observe their behaviors without immediate self-criticism. This step is about building awareness and understanding patterns, not feeling guilty about a current or past decision. For instance, noticing that you're procrastinating by watching YouTube videos is taking away from study time is an observation. The next step is deciding how to adjust this habit. The more time and energy you spend on regret, the less time you can dedicate on moving past this and creating habits that will be beneficial. An example of a student's habit scorecard. Well, let's create a habit scorecard for a hypothetical student called Alex, who which is a year 10 student in high school who attends Penrith High School. The scorecard will help Alex observe daily habits and determine which ones support his goals of improving academic performance and maintaining a healthy lifestyle. For their morning routine, Alex might write, wake up at 7 a.m., which is equals, snooze alarm twice, which is negative, checking social media for 30 minutes, which is negative, a quick breakfast, which is probably positive, pack the school bag the night before, which is a positive as well. For school activities, participate in class discussions, which is definitely a positive, eat lunch with friends, that's positive in terms of socializing, drink only one soda or Coke, that's probably a negative. Study during free periods, positive. After school, play video game for one hour. That's neutral. And it's important to have that balance, perhaps. Homework for two hours, big positive. Check social media while doing homework, negative. Practice guitar for 30 minutes, positive. Evening routine, dinner with family, positive. Watch TV for two or three hours, negative. Plan next day before bedtime, that's a big positive and read for pleasure before sleeping, that's a positive. Bedtime, go to bed at 10 p.m. In my opinion, that's a positive, not too late. Um, but if it was 11, 12, or 1 a.m., probably a negative. Use phone in bed for an hour, that's a negative. And this is all something that you have to adjust to your specific situation, but I just use that as a hypothetical example for Alex. Let's say you've written down all the tasks that you've done and you have a positive, negative and neutral to each of these tasks and you have a good idea how you want to spend your time and make the most out of it. In order to implement this and help ensure you stick to it, you can also apply the method of pointing and calling. This involves making a conscious effort to speak it out loud, the action you're about to take and predicting the outcome. By recognizing voicing out the action, you can increase the student's ability to actually follow it. Let's show how this has been done for the morning routine for Alex. Let's say it's the morning. As the alarm goes off, Alex may say, I am about to press the snooze button now, which can make me rush later on and feel very tired. I will stop snoozing the alarm and get out of bed immediately. Or, for checking social media, before picking up his phone, when waking up, Alex, Alex could say, I'm checking Instagram and TikTok, which eats into my preparation time. I'm going to... Still check, but limit this to five minutes maximum. This can be applied for the entire scorecard, but should be adapted to whatever may apply for your life. Keep in mind, changing habits takes time and the right mentality. You may not be perfect, and probably you definitely won't be perfect when starting to 
change your life quite radically, but the habit scorecard and applying pointing and calling technique can definitely help. Our brains are complex and can be taught to do the right things. So doing the right habits can benefit us tremendously in the future. Let's say your goal is to transfer into a selective high school, which is definitely possible and is something that I've done. But don't think it just takes tutoring to get in. There's so many people who go to tutoring. So if you cut corners or try to find the easy way out, what makes you different to the others? And chances are it's the habits that you do and it's what you do, not just inside those tutoring classes, but outside those classes, which is why the habit scorecard is so crucial. Hard work that is based in the right areas is what makes a tremendous difference for students to reach their goals. For me personally, when I made it into Penrith High School for Year 7, I tried three times to get into Giroui. If I didn't change my habits, if I wasn't aware of what I needed to do, there was no way I would have made it in or even tried again. I have taught many students who only try once to transfer and they never do it again because they don't want to put in that effort over that period of time. But just like habits and trying to transfer into a selective high school, it takes hard work and dedication for an extended period of time. And if you're looking for shortcuts, it's probably not going to work. Regardless, I hope you guys like this video. Make sure to put a thumbs up, comment down below if you had a habit that you wanted to cross out or eliminate, or maybe something that you've adopted pretty recently. I'm so excited to hear what you guys say. If you had any suggestions of what I should cover next, let me know down below. I have a couple of video ideas that I want to definitely pump out. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.